there's only so much you can see between a relationship or two different people when you meet them. So my job is to show their love for each other and to show the uniqueness of the relationship and the way that they communicate with each other through pictures and hopefully show others that they really are in love and just the, the way that, that they feel for each other and their hearts for each other. I started taking pictures in high school in my yearbook team and I really had no confidence with it. Um, I was just snapping pictures here and there and I really had a passion for it but it really wasn't something in the front of my mind. I was just like, oh cool, camera, and this is really cool. But the way that I grew taking pictures was unreal. Like the feeling I got when I took a picture was like no other feeling. And now it's just everything for me. I mean, I want it to be my life. I want it to be my career. And even now, like that's all I want to do. And years ago, even a year ago, I was like, what is this? Like, I mean, photography's cool. Like everyone likes photography, but for me now, it's like, it's really just a part of me and I love it. And our emotions, our feelings, our expressions, it's all a form of art. for me to have this process. How I organize things in my head are really visual and it'll get jumbled up and lost in there and disjointed. So I, that's why I'm like really dependent on my sketchbooks. I have to write things down and like see them out in front of me for them to, I guess for them to like kind of make sense to other people. My sculpture teacher, I love so much, Joe Thompson. He, like, I always think of what he said, and he's just simple, like, don't make more crap, because the world's full of it. And so, for the wax pieces, that soft brown wax, like, really pushes my patience. Because the more you, like, stress out and, like, work on it, the, with the soldering iron, it melts it more and more, and it gets weak, and so, I don't know, you learn how to, like, just concentrate on patience. Art matters to me because I don't know what I would do without it. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs, what is, what's at the top of um, there's self-esteem and self-actualization. Like art is my top of the pyramid. It's what I need in life. the most natural thing for someone to do. You hand a child a crayon, they're gonna to run to the wall and write their name or scribble something out. This is not something you do in a studio in a controlled environment. This is something that people who take it seriously, they do it in the street. They do it just to get their name out there or the name of their friends out there. Then they risk getting arrested for things like this. And it's art in that. It's something I just, I just decided, like, all right, let's see if I can do this. I make art for me. 
now I recently started putting it up on like social networking sites or online or sending pictures to friends and things and the response has been overwhelming. I would love for it to be a career, but I'm realistic as well. I'm in communications, I love what I do. I broadcast, I love the radio, and that'll be my career choice. But this will always be something I do in my garage or in my backyard or in my spare time. You can't stop doing something you love. I want my art to tell stories. I want my art to create life where there wasn't. I want my art to make the intangible tangible. probably answer the question of what I want my art to do way more easily in a song or a painting. And that's what's so wonderful about it. When you feel depressed, when you feel low, that's why so many people write sad songs all the time. It's because they, because you want something to lift you up and you need to get out of those trenches, like you're in a hole to get out. I mean, I've had times where I'm writing a song and I'm just crying the whole time. It's, it can be, in the end it's a pleasant experience, but it can be very unpleasant. Sometimes I know I need to write and I almost fear it because I know that I'll be going into a really deep place. The role that I play in my family is that of the artist, the peacemaker, the musician. And what I do is I take all of these, like, the chaos of like just life's burdens and it's like I'm taking these heavy things and I'm trying to put them into a new form out into the world. Um, and that is the role of an artist. Like H with the T. <laughs> I am a creator. I'm not a writer, poet, choreographer, or dancer. I'm a creator. I make things when I put pen to page and body to stage. I change worlds, even if they're only the ones inside my head. I contribute beauty to the lives of those who surround me and I can't help it. I'm a creator. I leave footprints in people's lives like the ones on the moon, persistent, unchanging, and forever. I am both the inspired and inspiration from and to this world and I can't stop it. I'm a creator. I wake up in the morning and I don't feel alive until I've had my first hot cup of breathing, leaving with me for the rest of the day that feeling of life that I can't find when I'm dreaming, that feeling of writing, moving, and breathing, that feeling of being, that feeling of heavy heart beating, of an open heart needing to make and to shape and to bring into being. I am a creator. And this world needs me. Yeah, this world needs me because art is the respirator that lets the world breathe. Art is the chance for Earth's soul to reprieve. And I'm a creator. And I am an integral part in the functioning of this planet. Maybe chemically oxygen comes from trees, but you can lead a man to an art gallery, but you can't make him breathe. You can't make him see. And that's what creators do.
We're here to help you see, to open your eyes and your lungs, to let in the light and allow you to breathe, but you don't have to listen to me. Next time you see a creator, just listen and watch and remember to breathe.